Hi guys, good morning, and this is Serpentel Exotic. So today guys, I'm going to explain to you about the genetics. So this will be a genetics 101 overview. So on this video, I'm going to show you a slide that explains a genetic. So on your end guys, you better get ready and if you have a piece of paper and pen, then you can take down notes about the important information that I'm going to explain to you and show you guys. Okay, so let's proceed to our slideshow. Hi guys, so right now, I'm going to explain to you about the Leopard Gecko Genetics Overview. This will be a Leopard Gecko Genetics 101. So right now, let's start with a recessive called Dominance, Incomplete Dominance, and the Dominant. So those are the four trait that a leopard geckos have. So right now let's begin with a recessive. Alright. So under recessive genes, um, recessive trait and genetics, a trait that must be contributed by both parents in order to appear in the offspring. Recessive traits can be carried in a leopard gecko's gene without appearing and that leopard gecko. So meaning, recessive trait is a trait that which is hidden to another trait. Either it is normal or is also same recessive trait. So some examples of recessive trait, it will be an albino, blizzard, eclipse, murphy's patternless, marble eye, and nor dessert. And let me show you some example of the process about recessive trait. So this one is a normal leopard gecko. And the other one is an albino. So what we are going to do right now is we're going to pair this two. So first, we're going to put the normal on this side and then we're going to pair it on albino for the outcome will be all of their offspring will be normal and 100% head albino so meaning there will be no albino to the offspring since um, one of the parent is normal yeah that is explain how. Alright, so right now I'm going to explain to you further about the recessive trait and how it goes with a normal and 100% head albino. So here it shows. So right now I'm going to show you a Punit Square diagram which I got it, an idea from Sasbic Reptiles. So right now I'm going to put here a normal and it will be signified as double capital letter N. So as Sasebik said, the normal or a dominant trait, it always be a capital letter. And then an albino, it will be signified as um, small letter A. And according to them, the recessive genes or the visual recessive, it always be a small letter so right now let's show you the process on the Punnett square so on this side it should be a male and the top side it will be a female so this is how it will be processed so as you can see on the left side which is a two letter a or a red small letter a that is the trait of a male and at the upper right that is the female which is a two capital letter n signifies as a normal so as you can show on the diagram 
all of their offspring. It is a normal and had albino. And then let's show you on the other part of the diagram. On the first diagram, we show you that the normal is being paired into an albino. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to pair the normal, normal 100% albino into a visual albino. Let's put a male and a female. And this is what it shows. So as the above, as a female, it is um, a normal 100% head albino and on the right side or on the left side, it is a male or a visual recessive male. So as you, as you see, there are some differences on it. Since we are pairing a normal with a 100% head albino and a visual albino. So, um, on the part below the capital letter N, it shows a normal head albino. And on the small letter A on the upper right, it all shows its double small letter A, which means that this two offspring is a visual albino. Same ways on the other two, which is a normal head albino. So this will be their offspring. All right. So it should be two normal with a head albino or 100% albino and two albino. Meaning 50% of their offspring will be a normal with a 100% head albino. And the 50% of it is an albino or visual albino. So that is shows of how we're going to process the recessive genes. All right, so that is how it explain um, about the Punit square of how you're going to use it when you're going to calculate a genes or a genetic process if you're going to breed a Leopardaco. So right now, let's proceed to the different strain of an albino. So right now, I'm going to show you three types of albino strain. So here they are. Um, the first one is a tremper albino. Then the second one is a bell albino. And the third one is a rainwater albino. So, um, I have a friendly reminder to you guys, so we don't not, or we do not cross those three albino strain. You know why, guys? Because if you're going to attempt to breed those three albino, uh, you don't know which one is a bell albino, rainwater albino, or trample albino, because they are almost the same um, panotype. So that's why we don't, we don't advise a leopard gecko keepers to to breed um, between those three um, albino strains so right now let's proceed to the next slide so on the next slide this will be explained about the cod dominance and incomplete dominance rate so in both cod dominance and incomplete dominance both else for a trait are dominant in cod dominance a heterozygous individual expresses both simultaneously without any blending. An example of cow dominance is an rowing cow, which has both red hairs and white hairs. In incomplete dominance, a heterozygous individual blends the two traits. An example of incomplete dominance is a pink snap dragon which receives a red L and white L. If you're going to combine red L and white L, it will become pink L. I know guys, this is uh, a little bit confusion on your end and this is uh, a really deep discussion and it is, well, um, it, it's so hard to dig in about this too, but let me make it simpler to you guys. 
So for the cloud dominance example, uh, here are these two. The first one is Max Snow, and um, the second one is Giant. So that's all the common cloud dominance or complete dominance on the Leopard Gecko keeping or uh, Leopard Gecko hobby. So right now I'm going to show you more about the cloud dominance and incomplete dominance. So um. In, uh, call dominance and incomplete dominance it has a super forms so what are those super forms so the first one is a max super snow yes and the next one is a super giant so uh, I know some of you asking some question how we can make a super form a, a super snow or a super giant how will it be how it, it was possible Actually, you guys, it is very really easy. Let me show you how to make it. Alright, so all you need to do, or all you need to have, is a one card dominant. And then, the other one too, with the same panel type or with the same trait. So, this will be an example with a max snow, or two max snow, if you're going to breed them together. So if you're going to breed those two max snows together, you will get a super form which is a max super snow. So actually guys, if you're going to breed those two max snows, that is not guaranteed that all of their offspring will be 100% uh, max super snow. So the probability of this process will be 25%. So um, this 25% of their offspring Probably it will be normal max snow, normal or max snow, and the 20, remaining 25% that will be a max super snow. So that is how you're going to get the super form on the core dominance or incomplete dominance. This is same process also on the giant trait. If you're going to make or if you if you wanted to make a super giant. All right, so right now let's proceed to the dominance. So this um, trait is uh, a little bit complicated than the other trait. And a, a, a dominant trait is an inherited characteristic that appears in an offspring if it is contributed from a parent through a dominant L. Traits, also known as phenotypes, may include features such as eye color, immunity or susceptibility to certain diseases, and body features such as patterns and colors, or let's include the pigmentation. So on the dominance, there are some examples of it. So the first one is an enigma and the next one is white and yellow and the third one is a lemon frost so those are some example of the dominant trait and guys i just wanted to inform you that um some of the dominant traits they have a disadvantage if you're going to breed same morph or same mutation example on this diagram if you're going to breed both Enigma, what will happen? Well, um, uh, most of their offspring will going to suffer a severe Enigma syndrome. So what is severe Enigma syndrome? Actually, if you're going to apply it on a human, on a human, it is like a Down syndrome. Yes, uh, a dysfunctionality of the brain, which is not aligned on a neuron, and it didn't send a, a correct message to your muscle. So meaning your, your body is not functioning according to what you are thinking on your brain. I know some will do, but not all. That is also what happened on the Enigma syndrome. If, there, if your leopard gecko have a severe Enigma syndrome, you can see that your leopard gecko is just circling around your enclosure like crazy. And sometimes they are looking at the sky or you don't know what they are looking at. 
and sometimes um, some of them are well um, doing some weird stuff um, well just rolling around your enclosure and don't know what or what happening to them so those are uh, the characteristics of a severe enigma syndrome and that is fatal guys because some of them won't eat all right so it's it is also same ways on the lemon frost lemon frost has a two more not a syndrome but they have a two more so if you're going to breed both two um lemon frost that will result a tumor to their offspring and i also read uh, uh on the articles and some of my friends told me that also the cause of a tumor is a less pigmentation of a leopard gecko so the more patternless your leopard gecko is is the more prone to a tumor so that is how a complicated the dominance or the dominance gene so best advice to you guys instead of breeding them both same morph you can separate it on with with the other morph you can either breed it or cross it with uh, with the recessive or call dominance so that will be a best advice or you can also breed it uh, on the other dominance with a different morph or mutation so that you can make some call um morphs or mutation all right so guys this is how i'm going to end my discussion about the genetics 101 uh a leopard gecko genetics overview all right so sad to say this is uh, our video we're going to end so this leopard gecko in front of you guys it is a super hypo tangerine max now so this one is a combination of a polygenic and a car dominant trait. So right now, so thank you for watching guys and until the next time I'm going to upload a new video. Goodbye!